It says the graph below shows a change in energy that takes place when a hydrogen atom approaches a bromine atom. And we've got the potential energy on our y-axis in kilojoules per mole. And on our x-axis, we've got distance between nuclei. And that PM is not for as in after midday. This is picometers, picometers, okay, which is very small. It's only micro nano pico, so it's 10 to the minus 12 meters. Now to define the term bond length. Bond length. Now guys, you guys need to go learn these definitions. Please go learn them. They're very important. And you need to know them word perfect. I'm going to give you a rough idea what it means. It is basically the distance between the nuclei. Nuclei of the two bonded atoms, the two atoms, okay? It's the minimum distance between the nuclei. Now it says from the graph write down the bond length in picometers of the hydrogen bromide. Now the bond length occurs when you're at a minimum distance between the nuclei and also is when we have the minimum energy required to keep it together. So therefore this distance here is the bond length. And if you look carefully, you can see this is 120, that is 240, this is 360. So this would be half of 120, which is 60. So the correct answer is going to be 60. And they said you need to leave it in picometers, so it's 60 picometers. Then it says, what is the energy required to break the bond length? Well, the bond energy, which is the energy given off when it makes its bond, is also the energy required to break that bond, and that is this value over here. So this is the energy required to break the bond, and if we look carefully again, we can see this is potential energy in kilojoules per mole, so you must get this unit right, and that's minus 300, and that's minus 400, and this is halfway between. So therefore, you don't have to put the minus because I just want to know the quantity of energy. So it's going to be 350. And what is the unit? It is kilojoules per mole. Okay. Now it says name the potential energy represented by E. Well, we've actually spoken about that already. It is the bond energy. It's the energy that is either given off when a bond is made or the energy required to break the bond. Now it says, how will the bond length of a hydrogen fluoride bond compare to that of the hydrogen bromide? So what you guys need to do is you need to get out your periodic tables and have a look at where fluorine is and bromine is. And if you look at it, you can see that you've got your periodic table and this is group 7. This is group 7. Okay, so that's VII. And this is going to be your period 2 period 3 and period 4 and this is fluorine, chlorine and bromine and do you agree that bromine is going to be bigger than fluorine for the simple reason that it's got two extra shells of electrons so therefore the hydrogen fluoride bond is actually going to be a lot shorter it's going to be a lot shorter and why because of the fact that it is a much smaller atom than your bromine. It says that right equal to shorter than or longer than. We've already written shorter than and give a reason like I've said. Okay, let's move on to the next question. It says the boiling points of four compounds of hydrogen represented by the letters P, Q, R and S are given below. So we've got methane, ammonia, water and silicon hydride, right? So you can see they've all got hydrogen here. Yeah? This one's different because the hydrogen is the front, but never mind. And then we've got the boiling point. So the next thing they say is define the term boiling point. Boiling point, but what is the boiling point? The boiling point, do you agree, and I put two arrows, the boiling point is a temperature at which the liquid changes to gas, okay? So this is the point, the temperature at which a liquid changes to a gas, okay? In other words, we've added enough energy to make the liquid change to gas. Now to fully explain the differences in the boiling points between compound P 
and compound Q. Okay, so we need to look at these two. So do you see that here we've got CH4, so it's carbon with four hydrogens. Okay, that one's backwards, but there's hydrogen, 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 and hydrogen. And here we've got ammonia in with H3, hydrogen, hydrogen, and hydrogen. Okay, now it says exp fully explain the differences in the boiling points between P and Q. So do you see that this boiling point, P's boiling point, is much lower, much lower than Q's boiling point? And that's not going to give you any marks because they've said explain the difference, not what is the difference. And the difference is to do with two things. The first thing you need to realize is that both of these have got hydrogen, which is awesome. Okay, but, so it's not to do with hydrogen bonding, it's to do with the molecular mass and it's to do with the shape. Okay, so if you look over here, we've got ammonia, which has got three hydrogens and a nitrogen. So the molecular mass of nitrogen is 14 plus 3 times 1, which is going to be 17. Carbon here has got a molecular mass or molar mass of 12 plus 4, so that is 16. So the molar masses are basically the same, so it's not to do with that. It has to do with the, with the shape, okay, because it's not to do with the molecular mass and it's not got to do with the fact that there's hydrogen bonding because there's hydrogen bonding in both. So the un only answer can be to do with the shape and if you look over here what happens is that there is a, this one here is going to have weak intermolecular forces compared to this and the reason is is because of the fact that this is purely nonpolar. P is purely nonpolar okay so it's going to have very very weak intermolecular forces whereas night ammonia is polar q is polar and then for it has stronger intermolecular forces because remember the intermolecular forces are the ones that decide if it's going to boil or not stronger intermolecular forces because this but yeah, okay, if you want to think of it this way, if I come this way, I'm going to see this and I'm going to see it as slightly positive. If I come this way, I'm going to see it and see it slightly positive. This way, I see it as slightly positive. In other words, it's a dipole, whereas this, if I come along here, I'm going to see it as slightly negative because of those two electrons, which means that if another ammonia had to come along, la, 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 it would move closer to this ammonia molecule because of that slightly positive and slightly negative end of the ammonia. Whereas with methane, which is your CH4 here, you've got hydrogen, 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 and again hydrogen. So if I had to come along, sorry, that's supposed to be backwards, which is why it's supposed to be 3D. Okay, if I come along and I see this, do you see that these, this is slightly positive and this is slightly positive, so they are going to repel. So non-polar molecules, okay, are going to have lower or weaker intermolecular forces than your polar molecules. These forces are still very weak, both of them are very weak, because of the fact that this is still minus 164 and minus 33, which means that they're gas. They're gas at room temperature, in fact they're even gas at minus 32 degrees Celsius and minus 163 degrees Celsius, okay. Then it says between compound P, again we're looking at compound P, and compound S. Compound P and compound S. Now if you see this, this is silicon hydride and you've got silicon and again it's also got a valency of 4 because if you look at your periodic table you will see that it is just below carbon on the periodic table. But here's where the difference is. The molar mass of silicon is 28 and then you've got the four hydrogens which are one which means it's got a molar mass of 32 which is double the molar mass of methane which is why it has got a boiling point which is closer to naught okay in other words it's got a higher boiling point it's more difficult to boil it and the reason for this is because of its mass okay because the greater the mass the stronger the 
intermolecular forces. The stronger the intermolecular forces, and the stronger they are, then the more difficult it is to boil this. Now it says, explain why the boiling point of compounds Q and R differ by referring to electronegativity and degree of polarity. Okay, so I'm going to erase this so that I can carry on. So it says, look at compounds Q and R. So now we're looking at Q and R, and they say, look at electronegativity and degree of polarity. So let's just draw this again. So oxygen, and then you've got your little hydrogen, and you've got a little hydrogen. I don't know why I'm doing dotted lines because it's actually solid lines, but in this case, hydrogen. This is slightly positive, this is slightly positive, and this is slightly negative, okay? Whereas ammonia is in with your two electrons there, and then you've got um, a hydrogen here, a hydrogen here, and a hydrogen here. Okay, and this is slightly positive, this is slightly positive, and this is slightly positive, and therefore that is going to be slightly negative. But now let's look at the electronegativity. So, if we look at the electronegativity of oxygen, we see that it is 3,5, and hydrogen is 2,1. So if we subtract that, we go 3,5 minus 2,1, what do we get? We get 1,4. So the electronegativity of this tells us that this is definitely polar covalent. Okay, now let's look at the electronegativity of your nitrogen and your hydrogens. Your electronegativity of your nitrogen is going to be 3, and the hydrogen again is 2, 1, so that's only 0, 9. Okay, so therefore the whole molecule has actually got normal non-polar covalent bonds, the, the molecule itself has got a slight polarity to it because of this shared pair of, and unshared pair of electrons that are pushing these down, okay? Whereas this is definitely polar covalent and is pushing down. So therefore, this year, okay, is going to be more difficult to break, difficult. And why is that? Because of the stronger intermolecular forces, much stronger, much stronger inter molecular forces, okay, they're both of hydrogen bonding, admittedly, but what's important is that this here has got a very weak, very weak um, electronegativity force holding these two together, whereas these have got very strong intermolecular force, I mean, yeah, electronegativity, intermolecular forces, intramolecular forces holding them together, and they've got a very high electronegativity. And what does that mean? That means compared to this, this water is going to hold on to its electrons much more strongly than the ammonia. And because of that, it's going to be much easier to break the ammonia up than it is to break up the water. Now it says write down one letter of the table that represents one polar compound. Well, that's pretty easy. We would have already done that. That would be water. And a non-polar compound, ugh, it could be SI. H4, or it could be your CH4. And in fact, this we could also write as NH3. Okay, because although the whole thing is nonpolar in the sense that these bonds are nonpolar with a 0 0.9 difference in electronegativity, this is slightly negative and these are slightly positive. Have a great day.